This video includes a paid sponsorship from Span, but more on that later. While Tesla didn't unveil their new next generation compact Tesla at their recent Investors Day event, they did provide several exciting details that reveal the mind boggling new way that this vehicle and other next generation Teslas will be manufactured. In addition, Tesla hinted at what looks like a next generation Tesla van coming in the future. And they also announced the location of a new factory, which will be dedicated to building the next generation vehicles. So let's dive into all these exciting details that Tesla revealed. I'm John, and this is CleanerWatt. As we begin, I want to say a special thank you to all of you who support me on Patreon. Um, your support makes a big difference and really does help make these videos possible. When it comes to electric vehicle manufacturing efficiency, Tesla's only real competition is themselves. In fact, Toyota engineers reportedly recently conducted a teardown of a Model Y, and one of the Toyota executives who analyzed the Model Y said the following, taking the skin off the Model Y, it was truly a work of art. It's unbelievable. This is high praise coming from a company like Toyota, who is renowned for their manufacturing expertise. If Toyota is impressed with the engineering of the Model Y as they should be, just wait until these engineers get their hands on and tear down one of Tesla's next generation EVs. So with that being said, let's talk about Tesla's next generation vehicles and their manufacturing improvements with details that they shared at their recent Investors Day. First of all, it was made very clear that when Tesla talks about this next generation of manufacturing, this is going to apply to more than just one vehicle. Tesla actually put up a slide indicating that they are going to not only do a compact vehicle at very high volumes, but they have what looks to be like some kind of van that they plan to bring out in the future as well. It seems obvious that the manufacturing improvements that we're going to talk about here will apply to both of these new vehicles and any other future vehicles, and they will eventually trickle down into Tesla's existing vehicles as well. Nonetheless, on the near term, I expect the compact Tesla to come out and then maybe a little later, the van. And when it comes to where Tesla will build this new compact Tesla that we expect, at the beginning of the Q&A segment, Elon Musk did make an official announcement that the next Tesla factory will be built in Mexico near Monterey. With that being said, I'd like to dive into some of the really exciting parts and the manufacturing improvements that Tesla revealed at their investors day. But before I do that, I want to introduce the sponsor of today's video. Thanks to Span for sponsoring this video. The Span Smart Electrical Panel eliminates the need for a separate hardwired critical loads panel. Using the iOS or Android app, you can easily move circuits into one of three categories like the must have category, which is given priority during a backup, the nice to have category, which will be powered until your battery system reaches a 50% charge, and the not essential category, which is off during outages, allowing you to only use energy where it is needed most and extend your battery backup time. Try to do that with your existing system. To find out more and get a quote for your particular situation, go over to span.io or click the link in the video description. And when you do fill out that form to get a quote, make sure that you put cleaner watt in the comments section so Span knows that I sent you. One of Tesla's key competitive advantages over the years has been their ability to continually improve all of their processes and really their vehicles as well. And the wild thing is that if you're a competitor today, for instance, Toyota, and you tear down the Model Y and you try to take some of those learnings and build that into your production processes, by the time as a competitor that you maybe implement some of the things that you learned from Tesla's manufacturing processes, by the time you get that implemented into your company, Tesla will already be far ahead of where they were. So if all competitors do is try to benchmark Tesla where they are today, they're always going to be behind. However, with Tesla's next generation vehicles, Tesla is taking this to a whole new level and the competition is going to be further left in the dust. At Tesla's Investors Day, they showed that their new factory will have a greater than 40% reduction in manufacturing footprint. And as compared to the Model 3 and Model Y, their goal for their next gen vehicle is to have a 50% reduction in cost. 
Do note that based on what I can tell, this 50% reduction um, from the Model 3 Y platform to their next gen vehicle, that is apparently the original design of these vehicles before they move to the underbody castings and the structural battery pack. Now, when it comes to the manufacturing processes and how Tesla will achieve this 50% reduction in cost, here's a clip of Lars Moravi, Tesla's VP of Vehicle Engineering, discussing Tesla's old way of making cars at the Investor's Day event. You take all these stamp panels, you put them together, then you put them in a framing station, you build a body that looks something like a car, you put the doors on, and then you paint them. Once you get the color, you take the doors off, and then you start putting the interior inside the car. It comes in through the openings that already exist. I wish it went in like this big piece like yeah. this, but there's actually people coming in and out of the car. There's awkward you know, movements. Then we lift the car up. We put stuff from underneath it. We put it down. Then we put the seats in the car. And finally, we close it all out with glass, and we bring those doors that went away for a trip, and we put them back in the car. Most of the time, we're doing this with a big, giant car and moving it and doing really nothing to it at all. Moving on from that, Lars mentioned that their new manufacturing methods, um, really this started with the Model Y and the underbody castings and the structural battery pack because this design eliminated hundreds of parts and simplified the vehicle design. But as impressive as this step change was, the next generation vehicles will take this to a whole new level and involve a more modular approach to manufacturing, which will lead to a 44% improvement in operator density and a 30% improvement in space time efficiency. Here Here's Lars talking about their new processes, which will be implemented with their next generation vehicles, which will take their manufacturing efficiency to a whole new level. In the end, that will probably look something like this, where we balance parallel and series manufacturing in a way where we only do things that are necessary, with a much shorter final line, blocking a lot less of the entire rest of the factory, so we can optimize material flow using the best practices. And what that means, it's going to look something like this where we build all the sides of the cars independently. We only paint what we need to. And then we assemble the parts of the car once and only once. We put them where they need to go. The interior is ta attached from a bottom up or a top down uh, strategy. So there's more access for those robots and people. We aren't moving heavy objects around and doing nothing to it. And it means we're doing more work on the car more of the time. And then when we take it, all of these tested sub assemblies and we put them together, we finally assemble the car only one time, putting the sides on with all of their parts to a front and rear that was already assembled, carrying the floor in with the seats, and finally boxing it out with the doors one time, just like Cybertruck. So in the end, you get the same car, but it's not going to be a Model Y. Yeah, this is, not, yeah. This is a Model Y for illustration, not the next-gen vehicle. You probably picked up on this if you watched Tesla's Investor's Day event, but a lot of what was talked about came down to reducing the cost of manufacturing while also improving the end product itself. Tesla's goal is to drive down the cost of manufacturing, but also at the same time to improve the product itself, which is of course is very hard to do, but it gives you a huge competitive advantage. Beyond just that modular approach, when it comes to how Tesla is actually going to save money on specific uh, components of the vehicle, you can start with a powertrain that will be used in their new next generation vehicle. For instance, with the Model Y's permanent magnet motor, that vehicle does require various rare earths to make the magnets for that motor. However, as was revealed by Tesla at their Investor's Day event, their next generation motor will be a permanent magnet motor that will not include any rare earths. And apparently this will be accomplished while also improving the vehicle itself because they say here on this slide, lower cost and higher efficiency drive units using zero rare earths. So once again, this fits right into what Tesla is trying to do. They're trying to lower the cost and also improve the end product at the same time because apparently these new drive units will be more efficient. Now, I don't wanna dive into this topic too in depth and maybe this would be a good topic for a separate video, but I just wanna briefly talk about um, a permanent magnet motor that does not use rare earths. 
How is this possible and what kind of magnets would be used in that motor? Electrek recently published a great article, which I'll link to in the video description, discussing Tesla moving away from rare earth elements in their new next gen motors. This article mentioned that the most commonly used rare earth in electric vehicle motors was neodymium. However, apparently dysprosium and terbium are also commonly used. These are likely the three rare earths that are currently used in the Model 3 and Model Y permanent magnet motors. And these three rare earths will apparently not be used in their next gen motors. Now do note that AC induction motors do not use rare earths. So if Tesla was wanting to go away from rare earths, this new next generation platform could just include um, AC induction motors. However, apparently these AC induction motors are not as efficient as permanent magnet motors. So since efficiency is going to be especially important for their next generation platform, specifically the compact Tesla, which should be lower in cost, as they're targeting a 50% reduction in cost, um, it's going to be important to have a permanent magnet motor to reduce the, the battery size because of efficiency apparently. But also at the same time, you don't want to have a very expensive motor due to expensive rare earth materials. So this seems like a really smart move, but how is Tesla going to build a permanent magnet motor without rare earths? Well, I did some research and I came across a company by the name of Neuron Magnetics. And this company is actually focused on rare earth free permanent magnets. On their website, they describe their technology by saying, using a patented scalable process, Neuron will produce high powered magnets using commonly available iron and nitrogen raw materials that can be sourced globally and sustainably. Our manufacturing process combines breakthroughs in nanomaterials with well understood mature metallurgical methods to deliver high performance magnets at half the cost. As they list here, their clean earth magnets should be able to have high performance, low cost, very high temperature stability, very high price stability, and extremely low environmental issues. Based on what I can tell, their technology revolves around iron nitride magnets, and maybe this is the same kind of magnet that Tesla is going to be using for their new permanent magnet motors. So removing the rare earths from a permanent magnet motor, that's going to reduce the cost. But also Tesla is making another move by making a 75% reduction in the silicon carbide transistors used in the power electronics of the drivetrain. And they're going to do this without sacrificing the performance or efficiency of the car. When it comes to why this is significant, I pulled up an article on yahoo.com. And this article states, quote, silicon carbide is widely used in the manufacturing of semiconductors due to its properties such as as the ability to work at high voltage or high temperature or both and reduced form factor. So it's obvious why you'd wanna use a material like silicon carbide in the electronics of say a motor that has a lot of heat. But this article also makes it clear that the cost of silicon carbide is very high as compared to other alternatives available in the market. So apparently Tesla has found a good substitute for the silicon carbide in the power electronics of these new motors. And that will once again help further reduce the cost of these motors. And specifically Tesla states that their next drive unit will have an all-in cost of approximately $1,000, which should be the best in the industry. Another way that Tesla is going to improve the cost of manufacturing when it comes to a component basis of these new next generation vehicles comes down from moving the low voltage system from a 12 volt system to a 48 volt system. At the Investors Day event, Pete Bannon explained that basically moving from a 12 volt to 48 volt architecture will allow Tesla to shrink the size of the wires because moving to 48 volts reduces the current by a factor of four and thus reduces the amount of heat generated by the wires. This allows Tesla to use smaller wires and either completely remove the heat sinks or shrink them in size and thus reduce the cost and weight of the wiring. But beyond just the jump in voltage which allows them to decrease the size of the wires etc as we just mentioned, Tesla is also moving with their next generation vehicles to 100% in-house design controllers, which allows them to use less controllers and simplify the design of their wiring harness. For instance, the Model S originally used quite a few vendor supplied controllers. However, when Tesla moved to the Model 3, they were able to design more controllers in-house which allowed them to merge these controllers together and thus reduce the number of wires needed. With the latest design of the Model Y that has moved to 61% of Tesla design controllers, the Cybertruck will include 85% of Tesla design controllers, and Tesla's next generation vehicle will have 100% Tesla design controllers, which once again will allow for decreased complexity and weight and will make this easier to automate in the future. Now, when it comes to when we should expect Tesla to unveil their next generation vehicle, uh, the compact Tesla, or even that van, 
in the future. Since Tesla's new factory in Mexico is going to be dedicated to building this new next-gen vehicle, I believe a lot of that will depend on how quickly Tesla can build out their new factory in Mexico, which will, I believe, be the first factory to build out these new and next-generation vehicles. Once that factory breaks ground, it's very likely we could see production happen within one year because Tesla builds factories very quickly, and I believe Mexico will help them streamline the permitting processes, etc., and that they could do this in record time. So if I were guessing, I would believe that this new next generation compact Tesla will likely come out sometime as a 2025 model year and very possibly even as a late 2024 model. During the Q&A session at the end of the Investors Day event, Elon Musk was asked specifically to share more details about the next generation vehicle and Elon Musk declined to do so. And this of course makes a lot of sense because Tesla wants to make sure that they don't uh, steal sales from themselves and lower the uh, demand for their current vehicles for people waiting for the new vehicle. I believe we won't see the unveiling of this vehicle until it's almost ready for production. I do plan to do quite a few more videos on topics that were brought up at Tesla's Investors Day. So if you're not already subscribed to the channel, I definitely recommend that you do subscribe so you can be notified when I put out new videos. And also I'd love to hear from you in the comments section below if you have something to share based on this topic or another topic that was brought up at Tesla's Investors Day. I also wanna say a special thank you to Span for sponsoring this video. And also thank you to all of you who support me on Patreon. Um, your support makes a big difference and really does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community I've set up and how you can support my work, I'll put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.